now's the time to invest in listed property or is it? Craig Smith, property analyst and portfolio manager in listed property franchise at Stanlib, joins us for more. Craig, uh, let's just give us a, a, a big picture idea of the scale of the sector, of the listed property sector. It certainly has consolidated in the last couple of years. So how many billions are we talking about? The big players, the, the landscape? Mm -hmm. So the listed sector is roughly about 220 billion at the moment. Um, it's grown significantly over the last 10 years. Um, and that's been on the back of a lot of new listings that have come to market over, over that period. Um, and you have seen consolidation um, in the recent um, past. And we certainly see um, that as a continuing mm. trend in the mm. short to medium term. Mm. Are you watching the interest rates with a close eye? Do they have a significant impact on the asset class broadly? Mm. So, so it does. So property is highly correlated to, to bonds. So you've obviously seen since the end of um, May last year, 2013, with the Fed's comments that they would start to look to taper um, the, the bond buying cro program. You saw that that had an impact on, on listed property over the ensuing months. So certainly the, the interest rate outlook does have an impact on, on listed property. And that's why we watch very closely the 10-year the bond yields, which mm. it tends to track quite, quite closely. Mm. Looking at access to the sector, we know some of the big institutions are in that field. Well, I found in our discussions uh, in the studio, uh, often we don't talk about listed property and many of our market watchers don't particularly want to talk about it. It's almost like it's a special class with its own language and its own, as you say, the bond linkage, for example. So what access is there for ordinary investors, retail investors? So they're, they're obviously the, the easiest way for the man on the street to invest in list, listed property is, is through a unit trust. Um, so you find that most of the insurance and asset management companies offer this platform where they have dedicated um, listed property funds and with the minimum requirement monthly contribution or lump sum. So that would be the easiest entry point for the man on the street to invest in listed mm -hmm. property. And you know, one would advocate that as opposed to investing directly in, in individual stocks um, just because one gets the benefit of diversification mm. and active asset management. I, I suppose the follow-up question is, is now a good time to get into those unit trusts? So the sector in the short term is obviously going to take its lead from the bond markets, from the capital markets. Mm. Um, we're certainly still seeing that the property fundamentals are still healthy, strong. You're finding most companies are achieving their distribution guidance and mm. in fact outpacing um, that distribution growth. So you've had the likes of Resilient, Growth Point, some of the big counters, High Prop, mm. which have actually exceeded um, the market's expectations in terms of their distribution growth. So they're still managing to grow the income. And that's why we always emphasize listed property as an investment you know, over the long term in, in the income play that mm. property provides. So you have a yield, and, and that yield typically grows by inflation or, or outpaces inflation. How important is offshore exposure as you make that decision about whether or not to buy a stock or that's in the listed property space? So what you found over the last couple of years, you've, you've, you've certainly seen a number of companies starting to um, invest outside of South Africa, particularly in, in Europe, Eastern Europe and Australia. Um, growth Point's got exposure to Growth Point Australia. You've got the likes of Resilient that has got exposure to Nepi. Nepi is a, is a company that focuses on Eastern Europe, particularly Romania, um, and they're growing their distributions at a fantastic pace. Um, and all of, all of the lease income is in, in euros, so you do have that benefit of, of a RAND hedge element in this um, you know, period where the RAND is certainly quite volatile. How does our sector rate uh, as, a, as a destination for investors compared to some of the other big uh, property sectors elsewhere? We, my, to my mind, it seems we're quite sophisticated and uh, good access for investors. Yes, I, I think that's quite true. Certainly from emerging markets, South Africa ranks um, quite favorably. The market's um, fairly transparent and you've recently had the migration to um, SA REITs, so REIT legislation, which is mm. pretty much a, a global standard and it ties in you know, what, what those standards would be um, across the globe. And that makes it easier for investors to, um, to understand the market. And certainly mm. transparency is a big, mm. a big um, thing for them. Just mm. yesterday, there was news coming out uh, that German real estate company Sirius is planning to um, list on the JSC. Again, do you, are we seeing a lot of European players, and maybe I should say broadly international players, looking at the JSC as an attractive boss to be listed on? So it's certainly, but what you will find is typically that those companies have got a, a, a fairly large South African shareholder base already. So 
South Africans understand that company quite well, and Germany is certainly a market that, from a property point of view, that's performing quite quite healthily, and mm. Sirius in particular um, is, is attractive um, in terms of its share price relative to its net asset value. So mm. Looking at the consolidation that you talked about in the sector, I mean, there's some very big beasts there now. Mm. Uh, is more consolidation due? Are there competition issues coming down the line? I think, you know, up to date, the competition issues, obviously the process is, is duly followed and there haven't been any um, instances where, you know, mergers or corporate activity has been declined by the Competition Commission. Um, and I think that's by virtue of the fact that there is a lot of, lot of stock that's held outside of the listed sector. Mm -hmm. And certainly when you do find these mergers, it's not what the Competition Commission looks at more closely is the concentration in specific nodes. So you generally find that even the big account as a percentage of mm. certain nodes is not of a scale or magnitude that um, mm. you know, would, would be anti-competitive. Mm. But just talking to that point, I think we certainly do see further consolidation with, within the, in the sector, mm. especially as bond yields and the cost of capital starts to increase. Mm. You're finding that certainly direct property opportunities um, are going to become fewer and fewer. It's going to be more difficult for those transactions mm. to happen. And you will find that lots of companies will use their paper, um, they're issuing shares as a mechanism to mm. um, consolidate, particularly in, in these smaller to mid cap, mm. cap um, mm. companies. And how strong is the, the, the Africa expansion story when we put it uh, within listed property conversations? So it, it's still small relative to certainly the, the investments that these companies have in South Africa, but it is growing. And you've seen with the likes of Hyprop, they've given an indication that they're looking to increase their exposure into Africa. So they're committing additional capital. I think it's three billion that they're looking to um, you know, expand into Africa over the next couple of years. And certainly you are finding that more and more companies, the likes of Resilient, um, Atterbury attack are going into, mm. into Africa as they find those markets quite attractive. Which markets are perhaps most attractive on the African continent? Nigeria comes up a lot, mm. but uh, there are other, at least 54 other states to be mm. looking at. So I think the ones, the big ones that are focused on at the moment are typically Nigeria and Ghana, and that's where most of the um, certainly developers and the listed property players are focusing on. Mm. I think that's as a function of just the, the sheer scope of, of those markets and the undersupply of attractive um, property mm. assets.